Hello and welcome to this video tutorial where we are going to review how to use a template in the Automated Engineering Tool. My name is Brad Stratman and I'm going to walk you through some of the options and features available when using a template in the AET. This video is part of a series to introduce you to the tools, features, and assets available for EcoStructure building operation that can help drive deployment efficiency. We'll focus on the Automated Engineering Tool and how it can be used to drive standardization and consistency through the use of standards, along with features that speed deployment. Today we will walk through a demo that will illustrate how to open a template, edit some of the existing values, and leverage the power of the global edit feature, including search and replace from a spreadsheet. We'll show you the possibilities with the copy wizard and a few other features of the AET. Before we begin, we should be clear on what a template in the AET is. Typically, a template is a combination of objects that are engineered together to satisfy the requirement of a certain system or application. So you might have a template for a typical AHU or your standard VAV, or even customer-specific templates. The benefit is knowing you are always using the same proven code, and it enables you to deliver quick, but with quality and consistency. AET templates can actually contain just about anything, but in most cases they contain content specific to certain applications. These templates can be created by an, any AET user, or they can leverage the library of standard applications, which we will discuss in another video. Templates for AET can contain ecostructure building operation objects, such as graphics and programs, Applications can be developed for automation servers, such as ASPs or ASBs. You can have applications developed for SmartX multipurpose controllers, MPCs and MPVs. The AET will support templates for MNL and MNB controllers from the IA series, and Continuum B3 series controllers, as well as Zenta controllers, such as Zenta 121 and LAN device templates. Now that we're clear on what a template is, Let's switch over and see how templates can be deployed. In this case, we have an existing customer, Acme. They are expanding, and they have a new wing with an air handling unit and 10 rooms serviced by VAV boxes. Since they are a good customer of ours, we've already done a lot of projects for them, and they really want consistency across their buildings. The good news is, is we have over time created some customer-specific templates to service these applications. The AHU can be created from an ASB-36 template, and the VAV boxes will be done by a new template we adapted for the SmartX MPV controller. Providing the solution using templates ensures we provide them a user experience consistent with the rest of their buildings. They've also told us that the building is not quite ready to go, and the controllers are not yet live. We know it's an aggressive schedule, so we're going to have to leverage the PCT to create our solution. So let's get started. Since we can't get on site yet, I'm going to spin up an ASB in my PCT project. If you haven't seen PCT before, it's actually pretty simple. I've already got my Acme International project open, and I can simply click on the button to create a new server. In this case, I want to create an ASB, so I'm going to choose ASB 36. And I can give it a name. In this case, we'll call it 401. And I can save that to my project configuration tool. Give it a password. and that virtual ASB will be ready to go. Once it's created, I can start that server up, and I can use Workstation to log into it. Logging into a virtual server follows the same process as if it was a live server. So now our virtual ASB is open. One thing that I'll have to do is create a BACnet interface. Under this air handling unit, we're going to have the 10 VAV controllers. Those VAV controllers 
are the SmartX MP IP controllers. In order to add them here, I need a BACnet interface. One thing the AET is not able to do is create interfaces, so we'll do it manually in PCT now. Simply create a new interface, a BACnet interface, I could name it accordingly, and I'm going to create. We should be good now, so let's move over to the AET. As I mentioned earlier, we already have an AHU and VAV template for this customer based on systems they already have installed. So the first thing is to connect to the ASB that I just created. In the case of this virtual server, I'll need to know the port that I need to connect to. I can find that information right here in the project configuration tool. In this case, the port is 55390. Now that I'm connected to my ASB, I can see the BACnet interface, but I can see it's empty. Now I can open my template. In the AET, I'm going to use the Open Template button to find my AHU template for Acme. It's in my default template library. The template contains everything I need to satisfy this particular application. I have all of the documentation, the alarms, the schedule, the programs, the graphics, and the trends, all contained in this AET template. But before we deploy, we can also take advantage of some other tools that the AET provides. If I look at the object view, I can see all of the objects available here in this particular template. I can sort them by type. and by name. And now I can review or edit some of the properties of these particular objects. For instance, maybe I want to review all my set points. I can simply type in SPT into the search box and it'll narrow down the list to values with that, those three characters. I could review these values or I can even set them if I chose to before deploying to the actual device. I can also multi-select a group of similar objects, for instance these out-of-range alarms, and any properties they have in common I can set at once. So I can multi-select all of these alarms, and maybe in this case I don't want an audible alert. I can turn it off, and each one of those alarms now will not have an audible alarm. So I can make some basic changes using the object view. In addition, there's a global edit feature. The global edit feature basically lets me do search and replace across all the objects in the database. So for instance, if I really don't want SBT to be in the point names of all my objects, I can come in and change it to something else. And I can modify that across all of the objects. In this case, we're going to pick all of them except the programs. I can hit replace all and it'll go out and make all the changes to the database. If we go back to the folder view, I can also use the global edit feature here. The key difference is that from the folder view, I can limit the search and replace to specific folders. It's especially helpful when you maybe have a bunch of duplicate applications. So if I wanted to only replace items in the programs folder, I could simply highlight that and hit the global edit feature. I'm going to highlight the whole application and click the global text edit. Let's say in this case, Acme got a new facility manager and he doesn't like some of the point names that the standard applications have. You can do bulk edits using a simple CSV file. You can create a list of two columns and the AET will basically use this list to look for the first value and replace it with whatever you tell it to replace it with and then it'll continue on down the path. So, if I load that CSV file, we can see that it found seven word pairs. I can choose where in the database I want to make those changes. Again, I'm going to choose everything but the programs, and then hit start. 
and it'll walk through the database and make all the changes identified in the spreadsheet. Now that it's done, we could go back to the object view and see all those changes. Once I'm done making my changes, I'm going to rename the folder to give it a better description. And then I'm ready to save it back to my ASB. We can see the I.O. is all configured. Everything is green and ready to go. So all I have to do is hit the button to save to my server. Kick the process off. It'll do an error check and save all the object back to my ASB. Once that save is complete, I can click yes to update the system tree. Once that's done, we can take a look at our automation server and see that everything's been populated. The onboard IO is ready to be deployed. We just need to wait to deploy it to a real device. So we're complete with the application for the AHU. Now we need to do the 10 VAVs. There's actually an enhanced duplication process that would work great for creating these 10 VAVs. We'll cover that in a separate video. In this case, let's open up our template for their VAV. Once open, I can rename my device. In this case, we're going to call it VAV Room 100. I can look and see what else is included in this particular application. I've got all my programming and graphics, the onboard I.O., and even a sensor bus with two room units configured. But my application calls for 10 VAVs and I only have one. I could use custom types or enhanced duplication. In this case, I'm just going to use the copy wizard. The copy wizard allows you a quick way to duplicate this particular application. I simply navigate down and select what I'd like to duplicate. In this case, I'm going to duplicate the entire controller. I can come over here and identify what characters I want to change, what value to start with. In this case, I'm going to start with 02. I want it to copy the I.O. objects. I can actually do kind of a search and replace at the same time. In this case, I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to tell it I need nine more copies. Once all those things are set, I simply click Copy and let the AET do its work. In a short amount of time, I have my 10 VABs, and I can save them back to my workspace. Now I have my 10 VAB units, all identical, in my workspace. I could again use the global edit features, or go back to object view and change properties like set points or flow set points. But in this case, I'm just going to save it back to my server. Launch the process, and just like that, I'll have created an air handling unit and 10 VAVs. With that done, we can take a look back in Workstation and see that underneath our BACnet interface, we now have our 10 VAVs. And they're all ready for the next steps. So with our air handling unit and VAV boxes configured, of course there's some additional work we would need to do to integrate these new systems with the rest of the building. But the bulk of the work is done and ready to be deployed. I could create an image of each VAV controller and send a technician with the eCommission SmartX mobile app out to get the VAVs up and running as soon as they have power. They could be running and balanced in a really short period of time. Using templates really provides a lot of benefits. 
It speeds project delivery, especially when combined with the PCT, the MP controllers, and the eCommission SmartX mobile app. It delivers proven quality. You've used these applications before, and you're confident in their performance. And that ultimately reduces your costs. The more you can standardize, the more you can spend time in other areas of your project. This wraps up a quick video on using AET templates. Like always, a quick reminder, if you're looking for any information related to EcoStructure building operation, simply visit the exchange at echobuilding.schneider-electric.com or download the mobile app. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.